worship in the presence of the Lord of his fullness of joy and at his bright time pleasures just forevermore hallelujah there is none like him he's a faithful God hallelujah somebody celebrate Jesus once again if you have a testimony to share with us pastor all should be waiting to receive your testimony through the joy entrance hallelujah we're going old school this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You know all those old praise and worship we used to sing when we were small? Growing up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa. And just so, oh yeah, put your hands together. Hallelujah. We serve the ancients of days. Hey!
kings. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. Worship Jesus. You are Yahweh. King of glory. Administration. Put your hands together for Jesus. The hope voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're jamming those hands together to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, let me hear a stone just hallelujah. This morning we are here to come and sing praises unto the name of the Lord, the one who is on a member. 
the God that does wondrous things. If you think that the Lord has not been faithful, maybe count that one, two, three. For what am I talking about? That you're still alive here, it is the Lord's faithfulness. That you're not insane, it is the Lord's faithfulness. That you have not given up, it is the Lord's faithfulness. We want you to just join us this morning. Rise on your feet and help us worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
Our God is good. And he doeth good things. Hallelujah. This morning was one who lifts up our voice to seek for more of his fire, more of his power. We want to be drenched in his power. We want to be drenched in his water. Our song this, our song this morning says, I want the fire. That fire that will keep burning in our hearts. That fire that will keep burning on our altars. That fire that will keep burning in our marriages. This morning, that is what we're seeking for. And I pray that even as we lift up our voices to worship God this morning, that fire will fall on you in Jesus' name.
of his living water flow through us. May the fresh oil of the almighty God rest upon you. Can you put your right hand on your head and say, Lord, baptize me with fresh fire. Can you call upon him? Lord, fresh fire. Lord, fresh fire. Lord, fresh fire from heaven. Lord, fresh fire from heaven. Lord, fresh fire. Love fresh fire. Oh, talk to him. First it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. First it was fragrance. Oh, yes, Lord. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. First it was fragrance, then it turned to fire. My worship is now at home. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Sing first it was fragrance.
Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are. Most high. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord.
Otobio Baba hema Tobio Otobio Baba hema Tobio Yeye Ayi lo batiki da betele Olo agbagbara Afuni ma siregu o
Hallelujah. Welcome back to church. Put your hands together for Jesus. To your left, to your right, welcome your brother and to your, si your sisters. All right, so good to see you in church. Can take your seat. Listen to me. With God, all things are possible. You cannot lose with God. You may have been locked down for a few months, but you are not locked up. Are you hearing me? The hours we hide ourselves, the season we find ourselves is our greatest opportunity. He said, lift up your eyes to see the feed. He said, because the fruits are ripe already. But before that statement, it counsel procrastination. He said, say ye not, it is yet four months. Then there cometh others. John chapter 4. He said, lift up your eyes and look at the feed. For the harvest is ripe, is white, and already prepared for harvest. It takes a person who can see. May the Almighty God give you eyes to see. May the Lord give you here to hear. First and foremost, convince yourself, I have not lost anything. The language of the world in this season is that we have lost quite a number of months. And therefore, this year is gone. He said, say ye not it is yet for more than comment of this. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor there is still hope for you. Tell somebody sitting by your side, there is still hope for you. Oh, you don't understand. He said, you may not see wind, you may not see rain, yet God is going to cause your valley to be filled with surplus. Water shall still flow in the desert in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As the Lord live before whom I stand, and upon his word I stand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you will catch up you will overtake you will recover listen to me out there they fight with their head in the body of Christ you fight with your mouth if you can't say it you can't, you, you can't see it he says, say unto them as truly as I live as they have said in my ears. The same I will do as they have said in my ears. Masolo Gwen. Are you hearing me? I don't know what I feel in my spirit. Somebody need to reverse some negative things. Stand to your feet and hold your head. I don't know what you have said unconsciously or carelessly or what has been said to you. Open your mouth and say, I reverse every negative declaration. I reverse negative declaration. I decree over my head. I cannot be stranded. I will not be wasted. I cannot lose anything. I recover her. I have grace to recover. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am not sick. I am not down. I am not a loser. I am not a loser. Weeping may endure for a night. The Bible says joy comes in the morning. I lay hold of my joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay hold of my joy. I am not a beggar. I am a giver. I am not empty. I am full of life. I am not hopeless. I have hope. Patatakosha. Ladakara. Lokwatakatakatakata. Shakatoparasha. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Open your eyes and look at me. I sense in my spirit that it's a conspiracy somewhere. Lift your hands and put, look. Anybody responsible for that, you will hear news in seven days. Lay your hand upon your head and declare whatever was spoken against my destiny in the closet before any altar. Oh, yeah, you was. Oh, yeah, rise and return to sender. Any negative words, any negative words, any negative words, any evil words spoken into your marriage spoken into your business spoken into your family spoken into your life oh yeah tear it down oh yeah cast it out oh yeah shut it lada kota katash le kota kata kata lokoto koto 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 e kota kata kata katash la ja kata kata katash le kwatesa la ta 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 shakata kata kata lo kota kata la ja kata kata la Leje ke te ke te ke te lo kwata kata kata lo to 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 e jua kwata kata la kata 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 la kata kata 
In Jesus mighty name we pray. Whatever has been exchanged in the spirit realm. Against my jaw. I reverse it right now. I reverse it right now. Listen to me. Many of you are going this way to catch up with opportunities. Many of you have been promised to come and pick up one or two things. I sense conspiracy in the spirit realm. Open your mouth and say, Father, I frustrate the effort of the wicked. Whatever exchange that has taken place in the spirit realm against my joy, I reverse by the blood. Oh my gosh. for your breakthrough in business. Whatever is negotiating for your settlement in marriage. Whatever. Jesus. I don't know how you are feeling before you got here. That sickness must not go back on with you. Open your mouth and say, Father, every form of sickness or symptoms of sickness or disease in my body, you are a liar. Oh, yeah, from your root, dry up in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, dry up. I cast you out. I cast you out by the fire in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest the righteous put forth his hand into iniquity. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Whenever I sense something like this, something is already happening in the spirit realm. Are you hearing me? Any covenant that is about to be activated against you this week, 
any covenant that is about to be activated against you this week any covenant that is about to be activated against me this week hear the voice of the Lord oh yeah pray open your mother prayers and father any evil covenant from my family from my father's side from my mother's side oh my god any form of covenant evil covenant about to be activated against my children against my husband against my wife against my marriage you are a liar i forbid you i did oh my god i cancel you right now i tear you apart any covenant anywhere he didn't covenant in my marriage he didn't covenant in my destiny he didn't covenant in my lineage about to be activated against my job against my marriage against my house against my family i tear you apart but the blow at the gallery lift up your voice and pray at the gallery lift up your voice and pray children department lift up your voice and pray are you in the toilet lift up your voice and pray wherever you are watching from oh my god any covenant that is about to be activated against my husband against my wife against my children against my ministry this week you are a liar my god has seen you ahead therefore i cancel you right now covenant of death i cancel you covenant of separation evil covenant of de- of separation in marriage i cancel you you evil covenant of loss of job i cancel you right now lakata jakwata para lakwata kata in jesus precious name we pray everyone who is a prayerful person you have a you have an altar and the function of the altar is where you activate the promises of god so god has promised so many things for you in the bible and satan is playing game with you because of our ignorance you will open your mouth and say father by the ministry of the prayer altar by the instrumentality of my prayer altar i activate your promise over my life this week i activate the promise of increase the plus the blessing of enlargement the blessing of fruitfulness open your mouth and begin to pray i activate it by the ministry of the prayer altar by the platform of the prayer altar oh god like command all of your good promises into reality oh yeah command everything called good that god has said over your life over your marriage over your home over your husband over your wife over your children covenant of fruitfulness is activated tell yourself i will carry my baby say to yourself as many times as possible tell yourself i will get a better job tell yourself my head is lifted above my hikwa tell yourself i will not die young or put your mouth and declare anyone who is involved in conspiracy against you right now in the name of jesus by the finger of god if they fail to repent in the name of jesus this week they are out of the way so shall get and say magadabaya badabaris engale badabadabaris jokoto godogodogodogodis jokodogodogodogodis
share one point when I finish this prayer. You will prophesy into your business. Somebody must not miss an opportunity this week. Are you hearing me? You will speak to that business in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? You will speak to your marriage are you hearing me you will lift up your say father say father you my career oh yeah receive deliverance oh yeah right now you my first ball hear the word of the Lord by the power of God oh yeah rise out of darkness I prophesy to my womb hear the voice of the Lord Oh yeah, God, God, I did Oh yeah, God, so get God, God, You better call for your marital settlement. Oh, God, be ya well, me want it to be more. I think she really has me want it to be my sources receive deliverance my breaking forth out of darkness receive deliverance my breaking forth out of darkness receive deliverance my promotion at work receive deliverance my lifting in life receive deliverance Lord God,
there is anywhere they are calling you for evil I decree let their children answer for it Some of you, you are aware of it. You are all you are working with a very terrible occultic man. Something is happening in the spirit realm. You are working under an occultic man. He's about to do something terrible. And here you are, your prayer life is zero. My father, by the covenant you have with us here, no one has ever been kidnapped here. No one can be used for ritual here. Lay your hand, your two hands on your head. Decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding rest upon you now. Rest upon your family. Rest upon your children. Rest upon the work of your hand. In the name of Jesus, you will hear no evil, you will see no evil. It shall be well with you in the city and in the house. Any reason, anyone involved in the delay you are currently going through, right now is cut off in the name of Jesus. You are set at liberty to go forth and claim your rights. To go forth and fulfill your, de your destiny. To go forth and be happily married. From the grip and the hook of the wicked one, I release you to marry. I release you to rise. I release you to succeed. I release you to be promoted. Amen. Only the voice of rejoicing and salvation shall be in the tabernacle of the righteous. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall see no evil. Amen. You shall hear no evil. Amen. Ah, anyone who because of you carried any sacrifice, as I speak to you right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, let that sacrifice to return upon his head. Amen. They keep wondering. They wonder, they are trying to find out what is making you to succeed. And they went extra mile. They went extra mile. And the Holy Ghost, in his infinite mercy, brought it. Son, oh yeah, pray. And I thank God you are in this meeting this morning. Every covenant, any oath taken against you is hereby cancelled by the blood of Jesus. It is cancelled by the blood of Jesus. The next meeting they plan to carry out, to, to, to have against you, the meeting of conspiracy, that meeting is cancelled right now. By the authority of God upon my life, I say, the meeting of conspiracy to demote you, or to tear you apart, or to separate your marriage, that meeting is cancelled right now. That meeting is cancelled right now. I said the meeting that was scheduled to hold this week so that they will retrieve that contract so that they will cancel that appointment with you. I said that meeting is cancelled right now. The 
will of God is enforced over your life. The will of God is enforced over your life. The will of God is enforced over your life. The will of God is enforced over your marriage. The will of God is enforced over your home. The will of God is enforced over your destiny. With your two eyes, you will see better days. With your two hands, you will carry wealth. You will handle riches. Ah, in the name of Jesus, you will live to fulfill your days. You are not permitted to die young. The Almighty God preserve you. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. On every side you turn, you find favor. Increase of the fish shall be your portion. In Jesus' precious name. Can you please take your seat? Father, we thank you. We are forever grateful to you, Lord. For the spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. This is when miracle happens. Especially when you didn't prepare for it and the law asks you to move in that direction. Let me just give you one point so that we can close. We're talking about the forces that fight marriage and how to overcome them. We started last week. The forces that fight marriage. And I said to us, after you have tried every other thing, counselors have spoken, you have read books, you have applied all that you think you can apply. You have been patient with one another. And it seems that certain things still keeps evolving in the marriage that is beyond you. Beloved, I said, don't look too far away. This may be the only area you have not access, attended to. And this is enemies, the invisible enemies of marriage. Please don't be quick to forget that the day you give your life to Christ, you have an enemy called the devil. And he's mad at your marriage. Everything about you is mad at it. Especially you getting married. Are you following? Anything that God institutes, Satan is against it. It's against the church. It's against a child of God. It's against a man of God. It's against a child of God. It's against anything that a child of God stands to do. Why? Because he believes he deserves the worship. And we are not giving him the worship. Are you following? So he vowed when he was cast out that he was going to deal with the seed of the woman. And God said, this, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So it's already settled that there will be war. Amen? How do I overcome this battle that is consistently raging? Because you will understand the evidence that is on, by the evidence that is on ground. How many marriages are really being torn apart. Are you hearing me? Like I mentioned last week, some counselors are even tired of some people. Traditional leaders are no longer worth sitting for their meeting. Family members are saying, please go and sort out yourself. Even some children of God, they are trying to avoid you because your own is becoming too much. Are you the only one in the world around? And it's becoming an embarrassing situation. I'm talking about certain set of people or some people. Or you have a friend that was not the intention of God because God said to us in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 33. He said, Our God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all of the churches of Christ. So wherever you see confusion, please don't think about God. Think of what the other person, the other person, that, the other spirit, that is the devil. He said, Look, our God is not. If God is not, then who is? Who is? Don't say it's that woman, don't say it's that man. Forgetting that, look, there is a spirit that possesses a person to make life unbearable for his partner. There is a spirit that must possess a woman or a man to make life unbearable for the person in his life. Are you following? Because the Bible says, for us to do good, it is God that walketh in us. Both to will and to do. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and 13. Now, to do evil, who is therefore walking in us? The Bible says, the prince of this world that walketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. So, to do evil, Satan must walk in some people. To do good, God must walk in people. I hope you understand. Now, having said to this, now, how do we deal with these invisible enemies of marriage? And you can't deal with somebody you don't know about. You can't even, you have to first of all identify who are these so that I can know where to direct my prayer. And one after the other, God began to unfold to us. Number one, we talk about deities. The gods and the goddess in the village. Are you hearing me? And we saw it in the Bible. We saw it in the city. 
It happens in the city, in the village, everywhere. There are, there is a, there are deities that people worship till today. Unfortunately, some people even can set up a religious house and still be bowing down to an idol. Are you following? God revealed to us in Second, seven, second, second Kings chapter 17. Second Kings chapter 17. Verse 12, verse 33, and verse 41. It says, For they serve idols. They serve idols. Whereof the law has said unto them, You shall not do this thing. I hate it. These are children of God. Verse 33. Go to verse 33. He said, they feared the Lord. You can imagine. They feared God though. You can see that these ones are worshippers of God and serve their own gods. Is that not mixed religion? Ah. They fear God though. You know, if you mention anything about God, oh no. You see them with their long gown, with their tall cap. Yes, they still carry effigy in one corner. And they still serve their own God. Yes, they fear God. They still have their own God. And they serve what? After the manner of the nations whom they carried away from what? Whom they carried away from? Whom they carried away from? Some of us have mixed with friends on campuses. And we have learned bad things from them. Like Rachel, who has lived with Laban, and her father, carried the gods of her father to her husband's house. They fear God though. But they still what? Have their own God. Verse 33. Verse 41. Verse 41. Verse, move from verse 40 to 41. Let's start from verse 40. Verse from verse 40. How be it? They did not hack him. They refused to obey God, but they did after their former, after the former manner. You see, this thing, this affiliation with identity is a very terrible thing. You will see some people in church. They will dance and sweat. They will speak in tongues. Them, secretly, they've gone to the village to sacrifice to idols. Now, I'll be verse 41. Everybody read. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their father. So do they unto this day. It's still happening. Ah, whatever grip that is upon your life from the deity in your family, that grip is broken right now. Amen. I said that grip is broken right now. Amen. Some of us are fighting our wives and our husband blindly. Not knowing that that man is not responsible for the trouble that is happening. That is a spirit activated. That is, those behaviors you do, cannot even trace. You are only fighting somebody and it's not changing. Let us learn to begin to deal with the roots. When you take off the roots, the fruits will die. The reason why the reason for complaint is still there is because the seed for the cause of the problem is still there. Do you know why God called Abraham? He said, Come out. Some of us we need to separate for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother. Some of us we need to detach from all of those traditions. God did not say you should leave your family, God did not say you should turn your back to your parents. He's simply saying that there are some things they lay on to which they believe their tradition. That is what God is calling you out from. He called Abraham out of those traditions. Abraham, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Because where did he call him out? From, out? from the land of all, where they worship idols. He called him out. He called him out. Called him out. Because the family is surrounded with it. You know, many of us, these, these things they are not eating. You know, I told you of my own sometimes ago, before my dad died. What are you doing with all this charm? You see it. He put something in front of it. I said, this thing, if it is working, it should have changed your situation. I said, I should leave it. I said, you cannot change anything. You ask, you st okay, why are you still asking me for money? Let me help you. So I packed it, I removed it, and I threw it off. Are you hearing me? It's G-Mix. It's light. They are trying to scare you. You have to say something before you touch it. It's not true. You have the spirit of God inside of you. Pack everything, set it on fire. The demons will disappear. Are you following? When I left, he told one of my brother. He said, look, you are not strong like this man. I want you to be strong also. The Bible says, after the barbarians, Acts chapter 28... 
when they looked at Paul, after the snake beat Paul, and they expect that he will be swollen and fall down and die. And they discovered that there was no manner of hurt on Paul. He shook the beast into the fire. The Bible said the snake that beat Paul was a venomous snake. And the barbarian watched him from afar off. Acts 28, I think from verse 3, they are about to verse 7. He said they were waiting for him to be swollen and fall down and die. And they, when they saw that he did not die, the Bible said they changed their mind. They changed their mind. This one truly is a child of God. You see, all those who have not respected in your family house, you are the one causing it. Are you hearing me? They threaten you that, look, nobody leaves this tradition and survives. Say you, say minus me. Are you hearing me? Say minus me. I, I, I'm trying to use this experience to build faith inside of you. They would threaten you. They brought one court guy to the office sometimes ago in the church. And he was like lamenting. They said he's going to die. It's true. When you leave a court, they will hunt you to death except you take over. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I told him, share the gospel with him. Pray with him. Led him to Christ. He was carried to the office. Are you hearing me? And now, he's a free man. But it cannot be free except Jesus is introduced. Free yourself. I want you to wholeheartedly open your heart and accept Jesus into that heart, into that home. The reason why the enemy is still tormenting your family, your marriage, is because you have not allowed the light to shine. In a family, a home where Christ is not Lord, Satan will be Lord. Satan will be Lord. So, if you want the defy the spiritual battle to end then open your door to Jesus open the door to Jesus head of family please I beg of you please save your family save your children you don't know what you are losing for not allowing Jesus to reign in your family I don't want noise I don't want anybody to just be disturbing me in this I don't want noise are you hearing me Praise the Lord. No matter how rich you are, everyone is appointed to die once. They said the man died. They buried him and they now put air conditioner inside his grave. I don't know what the air conditioner will be cooling. Is it the bone or the, or the soil? <laughs> you can see the level of ignorance of men that it should be cooling him. <laughs> I'm telling you a true life story that happened this year. Bury the man. Now put AC inside the grave. <laughs> Waste of money. Because of ignorance. Because the man that has died has died. If he's crawling, he will have been in hell. If he's, born, if he's not born again. And if he's saved, he's, in he's not there. Are you following? Ignorance of me. Ignorance of me. This life is too transient. It's too light. It's too sensitive. And no matter how you view it, even if it is 150 years you lose on earth, you will still die one day. Allow Jesus to take over your heart, your home. If you cannot do it, permit maybe a small fellowship in your house. You will see that it's the Ark of Covenant. As soon as it's settled there, you have opened that place as a portal to heaven. A house where prayer is said to the almighty God daily. You can imagine which devil want to rule in that place. Except if it is not to the true God. If you know that you don't have that capacity to be consistent in prayer. Then invite a fellowship into your house. Invite a fellowship into your house. That is the wisdom. You can imagine where you planted an altar. It will alter anything that I want to do there. That is the wisdom of our fellowship that many of us turn our backs to. The Ark of Covenant that some people rejected. When they brought it into the house of Obed, they do. Second Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. And when they brought it to the house of Obed, they do. The Bible says in three months, it was blessed. They brought it and his family was blessed. It was blessed. Even if these five people, fellowship, every Sunday, pastor, I can't take more than five people. Stop turning your back to the divine mandate. The house you are claiming that is your house. When you die, you are going to be buried in the bush. 
In case you are not aware. These days, people don't bury, no matter how rich, they don't bury people in their house again. No. Even the, the children. They said to some, they, it was an old, old phallus, old, 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 old plan. That when, when they plant somebody, when they bury the dead man in his house, so that they will not be able to sell his house. Listen to me, there was a, there was a story like that. Very soon. They exhumed the grave with the bones and replanted him somewhere else and sold the land. Let the dead come and fight for himself. Look, people are touched now. And they are smart. <laughs> I'm telling you, the children of these days, they will not pass. So live your life for Christ because it is when you are alive, you know what is on ground with your money. After you are gone, you have no say again. You have no say again. I don't know what you are keeping. Keep, live a life, a legacy that everyone will emulate. House fellowship is a key to really establish an altar in your house. And let me see that demonic covenant, satanic altar, thrones, any form of demonic force that will come and overturn that which God is doing here. You know what it means? God said, don't forsake the assembly of yourself together as the man of some is, for they know not that they do evil. For they know not that they do evil. Evil to who? To themselves. To themselves. Everything you need, you have. Use it to evangelize. Everything. Everything you need, you have. Sorry, you have. Use it to evangelize your property, your car, your land. Your... Use it to evangelize because when you die and appear before God, you will not be judged based on properties you have on earth. You will be judged based on life you have imparted and converted for Christ. If a man dies without Living a proper, a good legacy that others can emulate, that can liberate other families. Beloved, you have wasted that life. That marriage is wasted. It is not only your biological children that God wants to use your marriage towards to save. Other families are watching from afar off. Other people are watching your family from afar off. The experience you are getting in your marriage is to implant, is to steer up other people to be committed to God. And let's come and see what you say is not possible in your own family. It's possible here. You, be, you will be a loser. You will be a waste of life if your children have to go out and learn from other people from, than from you. What legacy are you leaving behind? You come to your house, your children have never seen you pray. They have never seen husband and wife come together and pray. There is nothing like a devotion. You say you are a Christian. You are nothing. You are not. Child of God, wake up. We are the one that opened the doors for the devil to afflict our marriage. Children have nothing to learn. He said, I know Abraham. May God know you also. Genesis chapter 18 verse, eight, verse, 18, verse 17 and 18. He said, I know Abraham. He will teach his children to walk in my status. He will teach you through them. He said, ah, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken. Listen to me. Except you plant an altar of fellowship, there are certain blessings of God that cannot be activated over your marriage. That I may bring upon him. Look, you don't know what you are missing. That I may bring upon him. When God sees that you are put in place some things concerning your, with your marriage, God will invoke what he has promised upon that marriage. That I may bring. Did you read that? That I may bring. There are things that God has promised, but you want to see that you are becoming a responsible father and mother. Putting your children in the way of the Lord. Planting a good family. Then God will begin to activate his blessings upon that marriage. I hope you are seeing it. Stop leaving your children to chance. Stop leaving your husband to chance. Don't leave your wife to chance. If you are the wife who is spiritual, who is strong, please wake up. Sometimes when you wake your husband and he's not waking up, just continue in the prayer. Over time, it can be like three months, six months before the man starts joining you. And don't force him and don't begin to put pressure on him. Don't begin to abuse him. Look at you. You just sit down there, sleep like a log of wood. You're already abusing him. A man will not, inside of him to join you, you're already building another enemy. As a matter of fact, this one is the most difficult one, internal one. It's right here. So, 
The spirit husband case, which is the one I want to round up with, the spirit of say spirit husband. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 4. They are, these spirits husband are fallen angels. Are you hearing me? Why are they fallen angels? Because they were originally sons of God, angels. Genesis chapter 6, beginning from verse 1, shall we read? He said, And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Watch this. That the sons of God underlined that word. That was sons of God. He's not talking about you, am I? He's talking about angels. Are you hearing me? If you check another version, it's talking about. If you check the Living Bible version, it will tell you evil angels. <laughs> it's there clear. He said that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Evil spirit getting married. Not that they pay bright price, they just possess them and start sleeping with them in a dream. Praise God. Now look at it. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Giants. And also after that, where the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. You don't know the source. These giants, where they have a root, a source. Can you give me another version? If you have message Bible or the living Bible version, so that we can read that verse 3 and verse 4 together again. Another version apart from King James. Apart from, do you have another version there? All right. And the Lord said, My spirit, go to verse 2, please. Verse 2, please. He said, The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took wives for themselves from those who were pleasing to them. Did you see that? Praise the Lord. From those who were pleasing to them. And, this, and the Lord said, My spirit will not be in man forever, for he is only flesh. So the days of his life will be 120 years. Then, verse 4. Verse 4. He said, there were men of great strength and size on the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of God had connection with the, with the, what? With the daughters of men, they gave birth to children. These were the great men of old, old days. The men of great name. Are you following? Praise the Lord. Now, if you get home, read several versions, you will see. But only the living Bible version revealed that these sons of God mentioned here, they are really evil, spirit, evil angels. Are you following? Now, after the, over the years, some people have been probably having some experiences. Experiences. Somebody will sleep and another person will come and harass. Harass the person. He will, fall, he will be fall, making love in the dream. And you cannot explain. Sometimes, you even see some people wake up wet. These are terrible problems. Now, so the extent that some people can even be giving birth in the spirit realm. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Now, some people can even be giving birth in the spirit realm. What is the cure to this? The cure to this is simple. Do you understand? Number one, you have to really have a connection with the Holy Spirit. Because if your spiritual life is empty, another spirit will possess it. Are you hearing me? There are many Christians, there are many people who come to church, you think they are born again. Many of them don't, they don't even have the spirit of God inside of them. Are you hearing me? So, when such a thing happens, what exactly is the aim of the devil? Satan is aiming at something. It's just to pollute you. When people are possessed with the spirit of lust, because Satan knows that the only thing he can use to ensure that you cannot stand clean before God is to pollute you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14 to verse number 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, God talks something, something special. Say, reveal to us something special about our body. 1 Corinthians, everybody read and God, can we read together? And God has both raised up the law and will also raise us up from among the dead by his power. Now go ahead, verse. No, I didn't ask. Please change this version. I want to, please. I didn't ask for, I didn't ask for a different version for now. All right. And God has both raised up the law and will raise up us by his own power. Verse 15. Know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. 
verse, verse 16. Now read this one. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body for two seed he shall be one flesh. Now, this is the only sin that God Almighty, even himself, want us and dread that don't ever commit it. Sin of fornication and adultery. Why? The next verse. He said, for every sin, go ahead. The next verse. But he that is joined to, uh, to the Lord is one spirit. Now, verse, the next verse. Flee fornication. Now, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Are you hearing me? But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Because that moment you sin against your body, the spirit of God steps out. Your body will be causing you. The temple is already defiled. Your body, the peace your body enjoyed before is no longer there. The protection your body enjoyed before is no longer there. The kind of fruitfulness your body enjoyed before is no longer there. Because that body is already what? Abandoned. God cannot use it because it's polluted. Are you hearing me? That is how terrible the sin of fornication and adultery is. Now, the ne- look at what God said. The next verse. He said, for ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, va- the, which are what? God's. The, is that the last verse? Is that the last verse? Okay. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Why will you carry what is not your own and give another person to share? This is the only thing that people fail to understand that when you enter into sin of immorality and fornication, listen to me, it doesn't end there. Some of us, we are here to understand this and it's affecting, you can imagine somebody who is married and you are secretly cheating on your husband, secretly cheating on your wife. You know what you are bringing to is the spirit of love that is in operation. Now, how did we get there? Revelation chapter 17, so that you know the monster that is at work. It's a spirit. Sometimes you have, you have not seen a man that is not satisfied. After meeting with his wife, still jumping from one woman to another. Listen to me. All those who probably think that, look, even until they have another, uh, another, maybe when they get another, baby, another wife, they will be satisfied. It's a lie. Big lie. If you get into marriage because you want to satisfy your sexual heart, beloved, you will soon get out. You will soon get out. Because you are, that if you have already entered with the wrong mindset, now, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, beginning. I want to show you that monster that is behind the spirit of lust. It's a spirit. And it fratern- people, kings of the world, fraternize with this spirit to the extent that many people are blind to it and not knowing that it's ruined them. Once it possesses them, it's difficult to pull out. Look at it. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven fires and talked with me saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great awe that seated upon many waters. The judgment of the great awe. Who is that great awe? Go ahead. Verse 2. He said, with whom the kings of the earth, the kings, the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. Are you following? Are you following? Go ahead. Verse 3. He says, so he carried me away in the spirit in the, into the wilderness and I saw a woman. I hope you see it. And I saw a woman. Who is behind it? And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored. Say seduction. Scarlet, colored scarlet beast means seductive spirit. And full of names of what? Blasphemy. Are you hearing me? What is it? Forget it. Enjoy yourself. There is nothing God, would, God can do. God cannot do anything. You, you cannot go to a uh, blasphemy. Things that God hates. It's an affront to God and he's telling you to what to do. Having seven heads and ten horns, sitting upon cities and nations, controlling kings. Now verse 4 to it. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pears, having a golden cup in her hand full of what? Abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Are you following? And upon her forehead was name written. What's the name written? Mystery. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. This thing is in the spirit realm. You can't see it in the physical. All those who think they are enjoying themselves, sleeping around, listening to me, you are, you are possessed. You need deliverance. You need help. Look at what happened. Go ahead. The verse 6. It's the Bible says it's a mystery because human mind cannot decipher it except it is decoded like this. Now, and I saw a woman drunken with the blood of saints. Is it the blood of sinners? 
this thing has crept into church. Many Christians are compromising. I saw the blood of state. Some people that think that they enjoy themselves secretly, they will go and begin to fraternize in campus and mess up. Are you hearing me? Deceive people and still come and marry children of God. And you too, who has been deceived, look at what happened. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wonder with great admiration. Ah, how come these people are not aware? The kind of people, the person they are sleeping with, the kind of, how come they are not aware? Is lost. Remember James. Don't let anybody say who is tempted. I mean, somebody who is, is tempted with, it, with the temptation of fornication is God that he probably, uh, maybe he is tempted of the devil. Say no. It's the spirit of lust that is activated. May you not be possessed with that spirit. Amen. It enters people's hearts through the eyes. No wonder. You know why David, not Job, now said I have made covenant with my eyes. Why should I be hood upon a maid? Because it is from there. It's not only coronavirus that have entered through the eyes. Now, the next verse, everybody read. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. This is what is dominating the whole world today. Immorality. Immorality. No regard for marriage. No regard for purity. I'm telling you, it has dominated. Go to any government office. Go to any organization. They want to sleep with you before they give you a job. This is what is happening. And I, I will still break it down to you to, for you to see. He said, the beast that that's why was, he said it was, and it's not, and shall ascend out of the bottom left beast. You can see that it's a spirit. It shall ascend from the bottom, and go into partition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Where they behold, he said, when they behold the beast that was, and it's not, and, and yet is, what happened to the, the next verse? And there is, and here is the here is and here is the is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is sitting. Is controlling nations. She's controlling nations of the world. There is a particular city in this nation in this world they call Sin City. Ah, uh -uh, you don't know. Not in Nigeria. Are you hearing me? And it's already extending the what to Nigeria. Sin City, where people almost walk naked. Where you are driving. You can imagine me. I was I went I was driving past Lekki one day, one Friday night for a program. I was invited for a VG. And now I was trying to check the signboard so I can find my way. And they come. I said, God punish the devil. God punish you. God punish you. Do I look like somebody who I said, I beg, I'm looking for a particular street. There is a redeemed church. I'm coming to preach there. God punish you. I'm serious. Ah, saw a big car. I was driving my GL and he said, I put on the full light. I'm selling you, they're almost naked. They're almost naked. Said, what kind of thing is this? have wisdom. This is what some people will see and they will melt. <laughs> the man is going to be praying for your husband. <laughs> Alright. How do they fraternize? See how they exchange their words so that we can close. In Revelation chapter 18 now. Move to 18 verse 1. How did they get involved with this woman? Let me show you. True business. Through exchange of cards. This is how they get involved with this spirit of loss. Reveal. It has been revealed here. This is how they get involved. He said, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was, was lighting with his glory. Verse 2. Be fast, please. And he, carried mightily, he, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling. Babylon the great is falling. And it's become the habitation of what? Devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. And the cage of every unclean and hateful bread. Are you now wondering why corruption is becoming strong every day in the land? Anywhere this spirit comes into it, it, it crumbles the economy. It crumbles the people. He it says it's falling. Anywhere they enter that evil spirit, are you hearing me? May it not enter your marriage. Yeah. If that spirit penetrated that through the husband or through wife, that marriage is gone. Now, 
He said, for all nations have drunk of the wine of, her, of, her, of the rot of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchant of the earth are was rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Listen to me. There is no pride in this one. If you, have, if you know that you have slept with any woman or any man outside of your matrimonial home, secretly come and meet pastor. Honestly, I will pray with you. You need deliverance home. Ah, I have repented alone. He can't, he can't handle it. That is why you are still doing it. We are talking about spirit that is stronger than you. Lord, I forgive you. Ask how many people have repented and they still keep doing the same thing. Why? You are under a stronghold. Let me show you something. Go ahead. You need to come and pray. come for deliverance. Hmm. And I heard another voice from what? From heaven saying, come out of her, my people. That is the solution. Just come out of that place. He said, come out of her that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not her, of her what? Of her place. Are you following? Then, and he said, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. The next verse. Reward her, even as she has rewarded you, and double unto her, according to her works, in the cup which she has filled with what? She has filled, filled with, to her double. Alright, the next verse. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I sit a queen, uh, no widow, and shall see no sorrow. That is how she makes her boast. The next one. Therefore shall a plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly born with fire. For strong is the Lord who judgeth her. The next verse, please. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall be with her and lament for her. When they shall see the smoke of her burning, God is coming to deal with it if she doesn't repent. And are standing afar off for the fear of the of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city is for in one hour is thy judgment come. Go ahead, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man bite their merchandise anymore. Why are they weeping? Why are they crying for her? Now he said the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and of pears and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all time. There he said wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Now and cinnamon and odors and ointments that is those are perfume sellers <laughs> and frankincense and what wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and what asses and chariots and slaves. In other words, he has dominated all economy. Everywhere you go, you have to give something in exchange for it. Is it that you have to sleep with the boss or they sleep with you? Before the contract is approved. It's everywhere. The spirit is a mystery. Are you not are you going to hear what happened even to even gain admission right now? Go ahead before I close. The next verse and the fruit of and the fruit that thy soul lusted after had departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are what had departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Go home and read the remaining one. Because if you go down straight, you will not see the merchant of these things which were made rich by her. Which were made rich by her. All these sugar women still exist. Just live with them, they can make you rich overnight. And many young men are following. The same way we have the sugar daddies. You see somebody at 72 marrying a child of a, dot, a girl of 22 years old and he said because he's a multi, he's a billionaire. Is that not bondage? Alive and living in bondage. Just because they won't. Listen, this thing is happening. This is what destroys marriages. You will not know what has gone, gone, what has transpired secretly. We have seen people who have gone to get job and the husband will not know or the wife will not know what that, the man has done with the boss or the owner of the company. And he comes back home, worn out. No, you think that he's tired, he's trek. He didn't trek. He has been used. The next one. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Spirit of lust. If you have fallen into a trap of the spirit of lust, please confess your sin. I'm telling you the truth. There are people, I respect people who come out and say, Pastor, this is my problem. I cannot help myself. Are you hearing me? Many years ago, ordinary lust that I sent in my spirit, I call pastors. Lost, I was, it, many years ago, just lost. And some people will be committing fornication and they will be quiet and be sleeping. Waking up. And you are not troubled. You are not born again. I, I'm telling you, you are not born again. Ordinary, I was only thinking, ah, 
that time. I said, hey, why is he? Why am I thinking like that? Am I still born again? God have mercy. He, uh, if you think that some pastors too don't, if you, 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 you know there are some angels. No, no, so, me, I, I have my weakness. Then when I begin to think, why am I thinking about this? Lost. God of God forbid. I call some pastors. Please, so this is my problem. Just agree with me. And we agreed and we prayed. That was the end of it. But somebody will be doing much more and he's dying. No, I can't do I can do a thing through Christ who strengthen me. That is what we are doing. Please open up. Seek for help when you need one. It would help you a great day. Stolen water is sweet. The Bible says very soon you will discover that your friends are in the in the nets of death. Your guests, stolen water. Stolen water. Say stolen water. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 17. Shall we rise on our feet? Proverbs chapter 9, verse 17. Say stolen water. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 17. Say, I hear. Everybody read. The next verse. Our guests are where? I pray in the name of Jesus, none of us will fall a victim. I say none of us will fall that victim. Stolen water is sweet, but he forgets that his guests are where? Depth of air. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not fall into this trap. Spirit of lust, let us collectively fight it. If a brother is taken over by that, it is not a subject of ridicule. It's not a subject to be discussing that material him down. You can see the reason why many people don't own up. Because when they run to you, how do you undo it? Are you hearing me? When somebody own up to you, a woman can have it, can be lost in. Don't think it's something you can keep to yourself. Are you hearing me? There are people that God has raised over your head as a spiritual head. Are you hearing me? And when you own up and we have faith in the prayer, that spirit will live. I have discovered that spirit is like a seed. Evil spirits is like a seed. When you expose them, they disappear. Are you hearing me? When you expose them, they what? They disappear. Spirit of loss is another reason. Spirit of span. Very jealous and have grip over people. A spirit husband can fight anyone who is interested in you to marry you. And if that person go ahead and marry you, they can frustrate that marriage. Spirit husband. I don't know if you have watched Monzion film recently, which they released. I, I don't know if you have watched that. I've forgotten the title of that program. That video. You need to go and listen to that. Watch it. It was Mike doing Lowe himself that acted the spirit husband. Because it's not a thing that ordinary weak Christian can handle. Can come after you and possess you and deal with you. When a spirit husband is in somebody's life, nobody, nobody, except you are spiritually strong, can marry that girl. So you understand. And if you, are invent you eventually marry, if they cannot torment you to be what, childless, then they will be troubling that marriage. One fight, one quarter. One fight, one quarter. So that is why I said, it is not the man that you, are, you should be fighting, or the woman. Let us collectively address that strong man, and it will be broken. And the Lord Almighty will set you free. Into the hands of him who is able to keep you from falling, I commit to you. You are blessed. You are highly favored. Great grace is multiplied to you. I pray in the name of Jesus, your marriage will not be scattered. And you will not fall into wrong hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, and so shall it be. Jesus precious name. Put your hands together for Jesus.